Please stand for a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What we're trying to do is to keep these jobs and everything in Scranton so we don't pick up the paper one day and see that somebody left down us on Mulberry Street. The government, the United States government, contracts out $650 billion a year, okay? That's a lot of money, and we want the businessmen to know this in Scranton, up in the Hill section, not only in the Hill section, but also uh, throughout the city. Uh, you know, they give contracts for every industry imagined. Uh, machine shops, distributors of all sorts, services, landscaping, lawn cutting, snow removal, construction, A&E firms, and suppliers to the construction industry, IT firms, janitorial service, suppliers of products, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's a procurement contract, and if anybody wants to get in touch with me that's out there, give me a call at the Hill Neighborhood Association, and I'll be glad to steer them the right way, okay? Because it's, it's quite a, a way to increase your business. In the long run, it, it's the results that count in this city. Taxes keep going up. Taxes keep going. Of course, so many people here get food stamps. I don't get food stamps. But I wish I, I wish I could. You know, every week, right here, standing before you, there's many intelligent speakers, and, and they make some extraordinary good suggestions and comments. Nobody ever seems interested in them. They just seem to fall on deaf ears. Even our Times reporter never reports what people say in here. Uh, There's been houses broken into all around North Scranton that, that nobody seems to talk about. It's not listed. Well, my friends, I don't know if you can, can help the people of this city. Would I view the problems we have in the city of Scranton and the fact that we've been distressed for 22 plus years, over 8,000 days, is the citizens were not, and the taxpayers were not responsible for that. Okay, we, the citizens and taxpayers have to bear the blunt of it because we're the ones whose taxes continue to go up, whose fees continue to go up. The, the taxes keep going up. And speaker after speaker, year after year, came to this city council, to this chamber, and spoke to city council, made recommendations, came up with solutions, came up with ideas. But you know, the citizens were ignored, and I'm hoping, we have a new council now, we have a new mayor, I'm hoping that that doesn't happen. Because the citizens are not responsible for this city being distressed. The, the taxes keep going up. Uh, the d dirty real people, I think it was called, or whatever it was, they put this city 50 years behind times. They're the ones who took us to court, put us in court, so on and so forth. And the previous con uh, the council after that, the same thing. That's the reason why the city is in the mess it's in now. The citizens and the residents are the ones whose taxes can continue to get raised, whose garbage fee continues to get raised, and so on and so forth. And the, the taxes keep going up. And the people are at the end of their rope. They can't afford it anymore. You know, the average person in the city of Scranton gets between six and eight hundred dollars a month in Social Security. The, the taxes keep going up. Now, do I have solutions for it? No, I had solutions. Ten years ago, eight years ago, six years ago, I was ignored. The Legion of Doom had a lot of solutions. They were ignored. We were laughed at. We were called names. But you know what? Everything that we said was going to happen basically happened. But who's taking the blunt of it? The citizens. It just goes on and on. Go on Prospect Avenue in South Scranton. From the 100 block of Prospect Avenue to about the 1000 block of Prospect Avenue. It's a total mess. You know, the, the highway to the Baghdad looked better after the bombing of the first Iraq war than what Prospect Avenue looks like. Again, who's taking the blunt of it? <laughs> Taxes keep going up. We don't need any tax rate, ta any more tax increase. Last time I was here, I addressed an issue in regards to uh, Mr. Amoroso. And I raised some real serious and valid questions uh, in regards to uh, 
his track record or his alleged track record of poor management in terms of uh, his alleged mismanagement of St. Vincent's Hospital. Before I left the podium, I had asked counsel if they had any knowledge of this alleged mismanagement. And, you know, it was really discouraging for me to get the impression that uh, it was almost as if this counsel wanted to do everything it could to dodge that question and not even acknowledge this it. This is a serious matter. And I do believe this council has an obligation to look into it, whether you believe it or not, you do. I think the mayor has an obligation to look into it, most of all, because this was his, his hand-picked individual. And that question still remains uh, out there, is who determined that Mr. Amoroso was, in fact, the best candidate to come in and so-called advise us, since we are so incapable of putting two and two together ourselves that we need Mr. Mayor Moroso to begin with. And we're still waiting for that question to be answered and perhaps uh, we, can, we can get the mayor to uh, answer that Problem question. Is, is that we oftentimes, our elected leaders, live in a delusional world and have a difficult time grasping the concept of reality. I brought a book with me today. Not, this isn't a shot at you, Mr. Rogan, but just in general, I don't know if anybody at council want to look at this or not. It, it kind of explains what a carpet bagger is and the whole terminology behind it. <laughs> Because um, Scranton is like this, the South. It's just being overrun by people that are just picking the last little bit of what's left of our city. The, the taxes keep I going really up. I think this council needs to work together, the five members, to file a petition for bankruptcy. I really think that's really the only way to go. I had a great opportunity this week to be at the single tax office paying my property taxes. The people there were standing in a long line absolutely beside themselves because they can't pay it. They're wondering what this council and what this mayor's thinking. There's people out there saying, I voted for this guy. Where's his plan? This is taking place at the mall. People are asking this question. They have no more money left. I really think that when you have a credit card bill and you can't pay your bill, you hire an attorney and you file a bankruptcy. We're trying to find new revenue streams for money. We've already heard a discussion tonight of what most retirees retire on Social Security with. My question is, in 20 years from now, when people in my generation, the baby boomers, are dead, who's going who's to live in this city? Who's going to live in this city when the, when the older people pass away that are in their 70s and 80s now? Nobody. We're going to keep tearing houses down? Is that the solution to our problem? Detroit did that to a large section of their city. It really hasn't done very much for them. The voters most certainly are responsible for everything that's happened here because they voted every single individual into the mayor's office and into council for the history of this city. And we wonder, if we wonder what happened to the Scranton School District, the same thing happened. This city is stuck in a situation where it has a total lack of ability to pick a leadership team. At the single tax office, I was laughing. I was having the greatest time of all there because I know I've come to these council meetings for over 20 years and I know exactly what's taking place here. Most of them didn't even understand what's going on. They thought Mr. Courtright was going to get elected, just walk in and cut all their taxes. That's what these people were saying to me. <laughs> Taxes keep going up. And you know, you don't close schools down and sell them off the way it's happened in this city. We have students without books in this city. How is it possible? This is a very, very desperate city that has no more straws left to grasp at because it had an inability to pick elected leaders that had the ability to lead. Something just popped into my mind listening to the other speakers on these grants. Uh, Seeing as the state constitution has saddled us with 33% tax exempt and the federal government for the last 33 years has seen fit to dry up the revenue sharing, maybe we should get a couple of bigger grants for a change. Uh, they stick us with the situation and tell us what rotten people we are for not wanting to pay a bigger bill year in and year out. The, the taxes keep Seems going like up. Uh, a lot of people have a business model that entails uh, a few years of tax free and then move on to the next tax free. And that's uh, one book I've read in the past was Free Lunch by David K. Johnston and that's what it's all about. Back during the election uh, it came to light that 
A lot of people aren't paying trash fees and they're doing it with impunity. And I would like to see a collection and liens against property at the very least. That would mitigate if they are unable to pay. If it's some poor old lady with $800 a month coming in, she could just leave the liens pile up against her house. But when a house gets sold, in the end, uh, we could also have uh, our money through attorneys and so forth and closing costs. Please consider Steamtown. It was put here in 1992, I think. It was conceived and uh, it was cut 10% in 2011, 10% in 2012. It was supposed to be a gem of the city. They no longer, uh, they're trying to get another steam engine running. They don't even have a steam engine running and their visitor ship has been atrocious. I gave you the figures last week, so please consider a letter to uh, congressmen so we could get some money in there. And It's supposed to be the gem of the town and oh, there's a lot of money being lost because people aren't, aren't coming in. And one final thing again, trade packs. We have the Trans-Pacific Trade Pack. We have uh, the uh, Keystone Pipeline. The pipes are coming from India. Where are the jobs? There, there are the jobs. And it, it's just a shame because uh, the working man has gone to, to half of what they used to earn. And please Thank contact you, your Dobbs. congressman in the office of the president and tell him no more trade packs. I'm say a little tale of two foreclosures, one at the mall and one at the parking authority. Both of them have cost the city many millions of dollars. And there you should be screaming, but I didn't hear a word out of you. Mr. Boskoff, as a partner as in the Mall Associates, Mr. De uh, Boskoff's and the Mall Partners are two different entities. It's the Mall Partners who caused the foreclosure. But being Mr. Boskoff serves on both places, he sort of comes in as a central figure. Now, apparently, he had to make a big bond payment and decided not to. Whether he think the mall isn't worth the cost of the bond payment or not, I know not. But I do know he's hoping to buy the mall back at considerable less than the bond payment. And who is hurt in this? The people of Scranton. He come, if he pulls it off, he comes out smelling like a rose. Why we smell like stinkweeds. Mr. Boskoff, as you know, was called in at the very beginning as a cornerstone of the mall project. I think the mall was something like a hundred and some million was poured into that. It's just the same that somebody would say now it isn't worth the price of that huge bond payment. We cannot take another 22% tax hike. And that's probably what you're going to have to do, maybe even 30%. And you're going to be responsible for it. Whether you want to do it or not, you're going to, the responsibility is in your hands when that tax hike comes up. And you know it's coming. The, the taxes keep going up. It well, you know, it has to be, because you've got to pay off this $22 million and $7 million they said that were, the budget was under, under, and the amount of unpaid bills. So what have we got, 30 million or 30 million more that has to be paid? Thank you. The, the taxes keep going up. Start off tonight with A under uh, third order. Is somebody going to uh, share that? Are, are we on track to get the audit in the time that it's contractually specified to be provided? I don't know if that's on track or I know that they are working on you know, the toward, audit, but toward a a delivery on time this year. Okay. And then also, will will we be getting? Uh, uh, Frank Joyce always provided uh, comparables on a monthly basis of the collections at the single tax office. Uh, will council still continue to do that? We have not received anything from the single tax office. Has it been requested? To that effect, um, but. It probably would be a good idea if it were requested and that we would have it. 
I think that would be helpful and provide it to uh, to us. Uh, I noticed in the paper this past week that uh, South Abington Township is uh, has gotten a new fire rating for their insurance and their insurance rates of residents are s scheduled to go down by hundreds of dollars. Um, and I'm wondering, what is our, the um, rating for the city of Scranton? We're class you, four also. That, and that's what uh, South Abington just went to, uh, class four from six. And our insurance, I know there's issues down in the, the uh, treasurer's office. Uh, is that $25,000 deductible uh, per year or is that per incident? I have no could idea. We, okay, could we find that out? Because if not, there, that would certainly be something I'd like to know. And then when Mr. Amoroso was here, he said he was going to provide his PowerPoint presentation to hard copies to the council or maybe soft copies, I don't know, via the internet. But do you have those? Um, I believe that that would be possible. In like real time, pretty much? <laughs> the sooner the better. I mean, there really are, are a lot of questions. I now, do we have any idea how much that would be a year? And if we do that, uh, what are we going to have left to run the city? And when do you expect that would be? I, again, <coughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, again, he said, um, <coughs> okay, another right to know. If it rains on Saturday, I'll have extra time. Okay, thank well, you. We very need much. to have his PowerPoint slides posted to the city's website so that we can look at that information in detail. You can't just pull up the ECTV program and be able to read the slides. You, we really need that uh, provider. If not that, then make hard copies available. So, Potholes. Uh, you may recall uh, several weeks ago that the Colts bus system had to reroute two buses because the routes were so bad with potholes that the buses simply could not make it through. Is there any possibility that the city could give priority to those stretches of road so that the Colts bus could get back to its original route? Because that may have affected a lot of its uh, citizens who depend on the, uh, that service. Uh, I know money's tight, but perhaps we can maybe prioritize uh, the work as the spring, you know, God willing, there will be a spring, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Taxes keep going up, and taxes keep going up, and taxes keep going up.